the rules of our society are very black and white themselves. We've had a long history of children, parenting children and parents, really wanting subconsciously to be parented by the kids. I'm not going to go over the dysfunctional family rules in extensive detail because they've already been discussed fully in the dysfunctional family video, but I am going to talk about the first three that I think happen a lot. The first one is to always be perfect. This is totally impossible and most people would deny intellectually that anyone has the capability of ever being perfect. They would think that a person must be crazy even to suggest it. But in reality, what one often sees is a child spilling a glass of milk and the parent saying, what did you do that for? The situation is absurd. It is as if the parent really believes the child is thinking, well, I just thought it would be a great day to be yelled at, so I decided I'd throw my milk down. In reality, we act as if things should be perfect. We know better, but day to day we don't often show it. The second rule in dysfunctional families is to always be in control, and not only of ourselves, but of the other people as well. That is totally impossible as well. It's almost impossible to be in control of ourselves a good amount of the time. The third rule is that if a person does make a mistake, somebody needs to be blamed in a very shame-bound way. What that leads to is the belief that everyone else is fine and that somehow the family member is greatly disturbed. If a person feels that way, he or she will tend to keep those thoughts to himself or herself. That creates a wall where one person is inside and the other person is outside. And the person on the outside is probably feeling exactly the same way, but the other person doesn't know it. So everyone walks around believing that everyone else is more capable or more valuable than they are themselves. It perpetuates grandiose thinking and behavior that somehow people can be more than just human. In order to be an effective parent, it is essential to understand how children see things. When a parent has taken care of their own needs, they will tend to see things in a more realistic fashion. To be a good parent, it is essential to reject these crazy rules. It's also important to realize that children need to belong, that the first desire that human beings have is to belong and to be a part of humanity. Therefore, if a child is allowed to be included, even with work, they will usually jump at the chance. This might sound strange to parents of a 10-year-old or a 13-year-old, but remember how kids were when they were three or four and how much they were getting underfoot, trying just to help out with anything they could, with the dishes, trying to copy what dad was doing with a hammer, attempting to pick up things to give them to the parent, or to wipe off the table. Children practice at being adults. They practice being capable and competent, and they ask to be included, and they ask to help. Only when a child becomes disillusioned with their parents or their own ability will they tend to turn from the constructive side of life and either pull inside or, or do very little at all or to actively identify with the negative side of life. If a person is bad or incompetent, they can at least be the best incompetent person they can be. That is the Jesse James complex. If a parent expects realistic goals from a child, if they are patient and detached, allowing them to help and understanding what children are capable of and how they think, the tendency is that the child will stay very giving, warm, and cooperative and will develop in a very healthy manner.